I'm Roman Yossi of the Nashville Predators. I'm Dante Fabro of the Nashville Predators. This is Philip Forsberg of the Nashville Predators. I'm Colton Sissons of the Nashville Predators. I'm Eustace Aros of the Nashville Predators. You're listening to the Renegades of Puck with Crazy Charlie. Welcome to the Bunker. Welcome to the Renegades of Puck podcast. I'm your host and captain, Crazy Charlie Sony. And before we get to the Ohio Step in Hockey coverage, first, let me direct you to our home website, renegadesofpuck.com. Once you go to renegadesofpuck.com, you learn everything you need to know about the show, what you're getting educated about the show. Click on that merchandise tab. It's going to take you straight to our classic logo t-shirt, our pride logo t-shirt, all of our different special event t-shirts, and so much more. All the gimmicks you come to know and love and expect with Renegades Puck are all still available in our online store, whether that's socks, throw pillows, wall art, bed sets. Makes no difference to the Renegades Puck, something like 88 different items in our online store. Best said, we've sold out so that you can buy in social media is of critical importance to this operation so here's how you can support the renegades of puck jump in the trenches on these different platforms you can find us on x and threads facebook and instagram you can also find us on tiktok so please whatever it is your preferred platform doesn't cost you a thing and it doesn't take you but a second sure does help us out though you can also find us on youtube and that is of critical importance we are trying to bolster those subscription numbers right now because we have some future plans for our youtube page that are very important to us here renegades so please if you can Subscribe to our YouTube channel by just searching out Renegades of Puck. Turn on the notification buttons if you can. We're trying not to overdo it with notifications, but we certainly are going to let you know whenever there's brand new full episodes of the show coming out. So please make sure you check us out on YouTube. That's where you'll find our full game recaps, all of our different game previews, and full episodes of Renegades of Puck TV. You can find the audio podcast on numerous platforms, Google, Stitcher, Spotify, Amazon, just a couple of examples right there. Thanks to the Full Press Predators podcast on the Full Press press nhl network we are now from local to global over 10 million replays all time as a podcast here known as the renegades of pucks we are sure appreciative of each and every one of you out there for checking out the show stick taps love and respect renegades we are again very very appreciative of you helping us achieve such a fantastic milestone again you can find us on numerous platforms just search renegades of puck on your preferred platform today venmo you can support the show financially make a donation like generous renegades Gates like you watching right now have been doing as of late. Thank you so much. We are getting closer inch by inch to building some new equipment out here in the bunker. Something to help control the temperature a little bit better. Maybe not necessarily a full HVAC system, but something uh, that can help with the situation. It's uh, affected our technology and frankly, it's affected the human running the operation here from the highs and the lows of the extreme temperatures that we sometimes get into here in the Middle Tennessee area. So again, thank you guys so much. Scan the QR code currently on the screen or just search for the gates of puck. In Venmo today. Now let's get to the no half step in hockey coverage. I know it's time to deliver the goods. Time for show number 881. That's right. Operation number 881 is a go. And at this moment in hockey history, the National Predators currently found themselves in fourth place in the Central Division. After 63 games, they have a record of 35, 25, and 3, 73 points. As the Predators, eight points shy of an automatic qualifying playoff spot of third place, 12 points shy of first place in the Central Division, six points ahead of their nearest competitor in fifth place, and in control of a wild card spot right now. We'll update every single game bit of this here in just a second on home ice which is where the national Predators next game will take place they were at 17 15 and 1 suffering their first overtime loss in their most recent game 202 goals for 194 goals against that's a goal differential of plus eight in the central division the latest and most updated standings sees the dallas stars in first place with 85 points after 64 games skated the winnipeg jets have only skated in 61 games so three games in hand over the first place Dallas Stars 83 points in the standings that has them two points behind Dallas for first place Colorado Avalanche are in third place with 81 points 63 games skated on the season then you'll find the Nashville Predators in fourth place with 63 games skated 73 points the St. Louis Blues are at 67 points and in fifth place the Minnesota Wild are at 64 points and are in sixth place nine points behind the Nashville Predators now the Arizona Predators at 55 points in seventh Chicago is in eighth at 37 points now in the wild card race right now the predators have a new competitor that they are tied with and chasing the pacific division has had a significant shakeup in the last 24 hours as now the vegas golden knights are holding wild card one they have fallen in the pacific division and the la kings have displaced them taking over third spot so vegas falls now down in the wild card race 
and Nashville also have 73 points. So Vegas at wild card one, Nashville wild card two, each team 73 points. St. Louis, the first team on the outside looking in, and Seattle, the second team on the outside looking in. Both of those teams have 67 points, six points back of the race at this time. Things are just going to keep getting even more interesting and fascinating from here on out. But the Vegas Golden Knights tumbling in the standings as of late. Someone always does this time of year. One of the teams at the top of the conference always at the the last quarter of the season has a tumble, and it looks like it might be Vegas this time. So we'll keep tracking that. If they don't start finding some success soon, Vegas might find themselves well on the outside uh, looking as that wild card is becoming extremely competitive. Now, let's get into the Nashville Predators. They're wrapping up this five-game homestand. They have an opportunity to pick up nine of a total 10 points on this five-game homestand, but that it is off to the road again four games in a row back to back coming up Saturday and Sunday make note of special start times matinees all weekend long Saturday in Columbus Sunday in Minnesota big points right there for the Nashville Predators Wednesday in Winnipeg so the Predators will actually have off Monday and Tuesday the first time they had two days off in a row in quite some time so again Saturday Columbus Sunday in Minnesota Wednesday at Winnipeg that's the next week of action for this Nashville Predators team and then on the 16th of March at the Seattle Kraken and on the 19th of March back home to face off against the San Jose Sharks. So four games in a row coming up on the road after this next home game for the Nashville Predators. Now the Preds are about to welcome in the Buffalo Sabres and they have met one time before it was in Buffalo. So this will be the second and final regular season meeting between the Preds and the Sabres. Back on December the 3rd, the Preds scored a 2-1 victory in Buffalo. UC Saros got the victory going at 34 out of 35. Forsberg and Trennan scored the goals. Uko Pekalekinen went got the loss for the Buffalo Sabres, 27 out of 29. Olsen scored the goal for Buffalo. Now, the Sabres on the season, 29, 29, and 4. That's nice and even. 62 points. That was in sixth overall in the Atlantic. 15, 12, and 3 on the road is a very respectable record on the road. 183. Uh, goals for 187 goals against. That's a goal differential of minus 4. But for the Buffalo Sabres, they have had some positive results in recent action. Back on the 25th, we'll take a look at the most recent set of five games. On the 25th of February, it was a 3-2 shootout win versus the Carolina Hurricanes and on 27 is a 3-2 loss at the Florida Panthers but everybody loses at the Florida Panthers right now 2-29 that would be February the 29th a 3-2 overtime win at Tampa Bay on the 2nd of March it was a 7-2 win versus the Vegas Golden Knights their most recent game on the 3rd of March was a 5-2 loss versus Winnipeg they do have a game in Toronto before coming to Nashville to face off against the Predators so coming into the Preds game the Sabres will have skipped skated back-to-back nights and also had to travel in between those games. Now, let's take a look at the matchup as it is right now. The numbers and the rankings between these two teams, the National Predators and the Buffalo Sabres, in the goals for category, 3.17 goals for is 15th best in the league for the National Predators, 2.94 for Buffalo is 24th overall in the NHL. Goals against 3.08 for Nashville is 18th, 3 even for Buffalo is 13th in the shots for category. Nashville is a 31.1 on net per game, which is 14th overall in the NHL, and the Buffalo Sabres are at 31. 1.4 shots on goal per game. That's 11th overall. Buffalo's shots against 29.1, their best overall metric rating and ranking in the league at sixth best in the National Hockey League. The Predators are giving up 30.3 shots against per game. That is 20th overall in the NHL. When it comes to the special teams, the Nashville Predators have the better of the power play of this grouping. 19.5% conversion rate is 19th in the NHL. 42 conversions on 215 uh, opportunities. Buffalo Sabres power play conversion rate is at 17%. They are 26th overall in the NHL. 30 conversions on 177 opportunities. When it comes to the penalty kill, the Buffalo Sabres better in this particular metric. 78.8% is their kill rate. 20th overall in the league. 40 power play goals the Preds are at 76.4% kill rate at this point in the season. 24th overall is their rating. 46 power play goals against. That is a really, truly high number. Let's talk about the individual skaters, statistics, and potential goaltender matchup for this game between the National Predators and the Buffalo Sabres. Middle stat leads the Buffalo Sabres in scoring 14 goals, 33 assists for 47 points. Darlene, 15 and 31 for 46. Skinner, 20 goals and 20 assists for 40 points. Tuck's got 17 goals and 23 assists for 40 points. And Paterk is at 20 goals and 18 assists for 38 points 
on the season. For the Nashville Predators, Philip Forsberg now has reached the 30-goal mark for the fourth time in his NHL career. He has 34 assists to add to that for 64 points on the season, maintaining above point-per-game pace now on the season. Again, after he had dipped below that for a couple of games, the captain, Roman Yossi, is at 15 goals and 46 assists for 61 points. Ryan O'Reilly's at 23 goals and 31 assists for 54 points. Nyquist, 17 and 36 for 53. And Tommy Novak, 13 goals, 21 assists for 34 points. Anticipated goaltender matchup sees a rematch. Potentially, we'll have to see with the back-to-back coming up how the Sabres deploy their alignments. But Lukanen, 19, 16, and 2, 0.914. Sabres center, 2.46 goals against average. UC Soros, 26, 21, and 3 for the National Purge. 907, Sabres center, 2.85 goals against average with two shutouts on the season. That's got you all set up for the Nashville Predators to welcome in the Buffalo Sabres to wrap up their regular season series. Preds looking for a bounce back. Haven't had to say that in a while. We'll talk about that coming up a lot more here in the next segment. It is the Rebirth Sports full game recap, and that's coming up next right here on the Renegades of Puck Podcast. Hockey players are as unique as the game itself, and your uniform should be tailored to fit you. Rebirth Sports is your sports apparel tailor. From shells, bags, warm-ups, hats, hoodies, branding, and more, let Rebirth Sports be your custom hockey tailor. And don't forget to tell them they do more than just hockey. Rebirth Sports on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Rebirth Sport, a match made in hockey. It's now time for the Rebirth Sports Full Game Recap. We go all the way back to March 5th, the year 2024, when the Nashville Predators were welcoming the Montreal Canadiens for the second and final time in this regular season meeting. Head coach Andrew Burnett deploys his lines and his defensive pairings in the following way, and this should sound familiar because he has the same combinations as the eight-game previous. It is Forsberg, Riley, Nyquist, Trenton, Sissons, and Glass, Jankowski, Novak, Evangelista, Smith, McCarron, and Sherwood. On the defensive side of things, you'll see Fabro, Shannon McDonough, Luzon, and Carrier in net. You UC Soros. We are just 23 seconds into the game of Bridgestone Arena, and it's Allen coming up with a save on Alex Carey, the first shot on goal of the game at 107 of the first period. Soros comes with a save on Joel Army at the 134 mark of the first period. UC Soros coming with a save on Gallagher. 323 of the first period. We find our first special teams scenario as Gooley picks up a penalty. Two minutes for tripping. Sherwood earning the power play for his Nashville Predators squad. Allen comes up with a save on Evangelista's backhand off of the rush speed power but no finish here for Luke Evangelista. Allen then comes up with a save on Colton Sissons and his deflection and then at 613 back to even strength now. Allen comes up with a save on McCarron. 649 of the first period. Susie Saros coming up with a slate save on Slikowski's deflection. The 803 mark of the first period it is Allen coming up with another save on Alex Carrier at the 1106 mark of the first period. It is Allen coming up with a save on O'Reilly's one-timer from the left circle kind of between the circle and the the slot, but at least a little bit of an angle to it, so not truly to the slot, but a big time save by Allen on the one timer right here. 12.56 of the first period. It's Saros coming with a save on Harvey Pinard, plus the two rebound jam opportunities right there on the goal line by Pearson. Saros had to be strong right here to not allow the puck to get through. At the 15.24 mark of the first period, we find our first goal of the game breaking through. It is the Nashville Predators on home ice. It is, of course, Philip Forsberg, his 30th goal of the season. Team leading his now fourth 30th goal of the season. It comes on the backhand and it was off of a Luke Evangelista feed laterally across the slot. Forsberg had to pull it over to the backhand because of the stick check by the Montreal defender. Really good finish here by Philip Forsberg for his 30th goal of the season. Give National Predators a 1 0 lead at 18 16 of the first period. Saros comes with the save on Savard. At the 19 52 mark of the first period, UC Saros comes up with one more save. This time on Gooley, the National Predators out shooting. The Montreal Canadiens 14 to 11 over the course of the first 20 minutes of regulation. We go to the clean sheet of the second period. And we find the second 20 minutes of regulation in 31 seconds. And it's UC Saros coming with a save on Joel Armia, much like we started out early in the game. 135, it's Allen coming with a save on Nyquist. Then at 159, it's Allen coming with a save on Dante Fabro. We go to the 315 mark of the second period. We find Allen coming with a save on Alex Carey, who was doing a really good job firing pucks on the net. 
this entire game. At the 4-12 mark, right off the faceoff here in the second period, it's Shen versus Anderson, five minutes each. Anderson definitely landed the first early punch, and then Shen landed the good late punches. They each go sit for five minutes. At the 5-11 mark of the second period, it is Gus Nyquist with his 12th goal of the season. Philip Forsberg with just an absolutely great feed from the below the goal line to the low slot area for Nyquist to finish this playoff easily. As a matter of fact, the Nashville Predators passing all the way from behind their own net all the way till the puck was in the back of the net uh, was pretty incredible on this play. The Predators definitely in sync at this moment of the game, leading to nothing. The 529 mark of the second period. It's Harris off the box. Two minutes for holding, putting the Nashville Predators on the power play. It's going to be Allen coming up with a save on Glass, and then Allen coming up with another save on Nyquist. That's going to do it for the Nashville Predators power play. They're buzzing, and they're putting on plenty of pressure, but they are not able to put Montreal away here in the second period. 9.53 of the second period. It is Soros coming up with a save on Caulfield at the 10.30, so almost nine minutes without a shot on goal for the Montreal Canadiens right there, and Soros, a very light second period so far. 10.36 of the second period. It's Alex Carey off the box. Two minutes for hooking. Saros would have to come up with a big save on Caulfield right here. And then Saros would have to come up with a second big save on Caulfield. The sniper was looking to go to work, and he was starting to pull Montreal back into this game at the 12.40 mark of the second period. You see Saros comes up with a save on Harris at the 15.16 mark of the second period. It's Allen coming up with a save on Philip Forsberg on the same shift at 15.53. Allen, another save on on Philip Forsberg. Forsberg was buzzing all over the place, trying to put the dagger into the Montreal Canadiens after scoring his 30th earlier in this game. We go to the 16.02 mark of the second period, and CC Saros coming up with a save on New Hook at the 16.23 mark of the second period. We see Saros come up with a save on Armia at close range. Really good save right here, but at 16.39. It's Gallagher getting his 10th goal of the season. Dante Fabro kind of caught in between on a play, gets beaten. The Montreal Canadiens capitalize on this. Gallagher with a really good shot. His 10th goal of the season gets Montreal on the board for the first time in this game. The Nashville Predators still hold a 2-1 to one lead. So up to this point, the Predators are dominating. They give up one goal after one missed play in the defensive end. No problem. Absolutely no problem. Everything's going to be fine at French General Arena. Let me go over to the back side of the sheet. And what are you talking about? What? Savard scores his third goal of the season time game up at two apiece six seconds later on a dump in off of the glass, which goes down to the corner and then perfectly into the net while UC Soros is standing behind the net. That actually happened. That really did happen. Yes, it did. It happened. This game is tied at two apiece. One of the strangest goals you're going to see all season long. Savard gets awarded with his third. He dumped it in hard. It goes off the glass, gets the ricochet, goes into the net while UC Saros is standing behind the net watching the whole thing unfold. So we have a brand new hockey game. We hit the end of the second period. Montreal out shooting Nashville now 22 to 21. We go to the clean sheet of the third period. And with the tie game, the two teams still kind of a little bit stunned, feeling each other out as if it's a whole new game. 222 into the third period. It's Allen coming with save on McDonough. Jankowski coming in for the follow-up opportunity. 402 mark of the third. UC Saros comes with save on Caulfield off of the rush. Then at 419 on the same shift, Saros another save on Caulfield. 632 mark of the third period. It's Allen coming with save on Forsberg plus the follow-up by Shen. We hit the seven-minute mark of the third period. UC Saros comes with save on Matheson at the 738 mark. Saros a save on Gallagher and the 933 mark of the third period. It is Allen coming with the save on O'Reilly's backhand. Another great scoring opportunity for the Predators. 11.47 of the third period is Allen coming with the save on Forsberg. The Predators seeming to gain some momentum, some more possession, some more offensive zone time and getting closer into the net. That's where you find them at 12.19. O'Reilly, his 23rd goal of the season comes on a step out move from below the goal line. He received the pass down below behind the net along the boards, picked it up, stepped out from below the goal line, found the lane he was looking for and went ahead and sniped in the top corner. His 23rd goal of the season gives Nashville Predators a 3-2 lead in the third period. The teams are starting to pick up the pace again in a 14-55 uh, third period. That's when Waugh comes up with his second goal of the season, tying this game up at three apiece. Montreal is on the board now with a wrist shot off of the rush. A neutral zone turnover by the captain, Roman Yossi, leads to the rush by Waugh, and he finishes the playoff with a sick wrister. 
This game is tied up at three apiece, but in 16:58 of the third period, McCarron seems to put the puck into the net. No, he does put the puck in the net, but once it is challenged for a high stick and everyone gets a chance to see the replay, the play was overturned, and this is, in fact, the absolute correct call. But Michael McCarron, great hand-eye coordination for just a moment. It looked like the National Predators were about to take a 4-3 lead. We reset the score at 3-3 three three with three minutes to go in this game. At the 17:44 mark of the third period, Stars coming with a save on Gallagher, plus the follow-up by Evans. Montreal making a bid to win this game. At 18:11 of the third period, the National Predators' incredibly sloppy line change leads with too many men on the ice penalty. The Predators would not give up a single shot on goal for the remaining of regulation, which means the National Predators would secure a point for the ninth consecutive game. Montreal outshoots the Preds 29-28 for regulation carryover of 11 seconds for the Montreal power play, so we start off in a 4-on-3 scenario, but at 17 seconds just after the power play ends in a 4-on-4 scenario, it's Suzuki scoring his 25th goal of the season. It was a sharp angle one-time snipe from down on one knee, giving the Montreal Canadiens a 4-3 win at Bridgestone Arena in overtime. Only one shot on goal in overtime. It's Montreal's 30th shot on goal and they outshoot the national purse 30 to 28 so again the montreal canes come back from down 2-0 and down 3-2 and win this game 4-3 in overtime and the national purse over the first 36 minutes of this game looked like they were absolutely going to dust the Montreal Canadiens. And then over the final 23 minutes of this game and the 17 seconds of overtime, uh, the Nashville Purrs did not succeed in doing so. As a matter of fact, one sharp ankle goal seemed to deflate this team, and the Nashville Purrs really never gained their dominance again in this one, falling for the first time in nine games, but they do still pick up a point, and that is of critical importance. We've got so much more to talk about when it comes to this 4-3 overtime loss at Bridgestone Arena for the Nashville Purrs. We're going to do that coming up next it's full analysis box score and so much more on the renegades of puck podcast that was the rebirth sports full game recap hello 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 i'm tracy owner operator of strong style fitness and that's me and my training assistant rizzo and we are here to bring you fitness that meets you where you are by offering circuit classes bar-inspired classes, Tabata workouts, boot camps, guided stretching, and more, all taught by a certified personal trainer, me. To learn more, go to our website, strongstylefit.com. Subscribe on YouTube at Strong Style Fitness. Follow on social media at Strong Style Fit. But most importantly, let's get you moving. It doesn't matter if it's your first workout or you've been doing it for years. Strong Style Fitness has the workout that meets you on your journey and helps you along the path to a happier, healthier life. I understand where you've been, what you were going through, and where you were going, and I want to take you there. We'll see you on the mat. Mwah. Welcome back in Renegades of Puck Podcast. Appreciate you joining us here on the show into the playoff stretch now, and things are just going to get more fascinating. I see people talking about where's the separation going to come from. There's not going to be any separation. This is one of the closest races with uh, just under 20 games to go on the season now that we've seen in quite some time. So let's talk about the analysis from this game, and then let's keep tracking all of these different races, all these different fun storylines and topics, and uh, we have so much to get into. UC Saros, let's start in that for the National Purrs against the Montreal Canadiens. 26 out of 30. Did give up four goals against in this game. Made some huge saves, but you know what? Not the best game overall for UC Saros or for the Predators defense in front of UC Saros or honestly uh, for the, the rest of the team. Uh, for at least half of this game, they just were not quite that good. So UC Saros did come up with some big saves at some moments, but overall not his best game of the season. Takes the overtime loss but did manage to help get his Predators that one point in the standings, which allows them to stay tied with Vegas. Ryan O'Reilly had a goal and two assists for three points in this game. That paced the Nashville Predators. His goal was sweet, taking that puck off the end while stepping out, sniping in the top corner. Ryan O'Reilly just brings the jam each and every time, not afraid of the hard areas. He took that puck into the hardest of areas and still found himself with plenty of time and space and put the puck in that. His three points paces the Predators. Now, 54 points on the season and just overall a strong night. O'Reilly also had four shots on goal, went 19.08 in total time on ice to lead 
all of the forwards for this Nashville Predators team. Philip Forsberg also picked up a goal and an assist, had two points in this game. That goal is his 30th goal of the season, fourth time in his career. He's made it to 30 goals. And uh, Barry Trotz revealed on the radio here locally in Nashville why Philip Forsberg has been missing morning skates and practices because he has a cut that has apparently gotten irritated a couple of times. So they're allowing him to stay out from morning skates and practices in order to let that heal up a little bit. As Barry Trotz said, more important to have Philip Philip Forsberg for the games right now than it is to have him at practice. And Philip Forsberg obviously not uh, suffering out there during the game. He has his 30th goal of the season. 64 points total that moves him back above his point per game pace, which he had dipped below uh, just briefly for a couple of games there. But again, Philip Forsberg's 30th goal of the season leads the Nashville Predators 64 points overall. And no reason to believe Philip Forsberg going to slow down. This is his time of year when he usually heats up from February on to the end of the season. Uh, Forsberg usually is a dominant, dominant player. By the way, Philip Forsberg also had four shots on goal and was third on the forwards in total time on ice with 18-26. Gus Nyquist had a goal and an assist in this game. The Nyquist-Forsberg connection, but it went beyond that. That shift had five, six uh, incredible passes. It started behind the Predators' net. Uh, the first pass was a long pass all the way up to the blue line and then into the offensive zone. Uh, the movement, the cycle, and the finish pass from Forsberg to Nyquist to put this puck into the net. It was really some of the smoothest work you've seen from a Predators offense. They were really just on it at this moment in time. So Gus Nyquist has two points in this game as well. Now, that's wonderful. But did you notice the three players that I've talked about so far when it comes to the offense and Predators scored three goals. We've talked about three goals. So we've covered all of the Predators scoring at this point. All comes from the first line, which is obviously Forsberg, Nyquist, O'Reilly. And the first line generates three goals and four assists for seven points plus nine shots on goal. Now, that's tremendous, but that is what the Predators were doing when they were faltering in the standings, when they were slipping out of the race, when they were losing games. Everything was on the shoulders of the first line. And when the Nashville Predators found that balance when Novak and when Evangelista and when all the other players that are chipping into the lineup as of late has started chipping and that's when the National Predators win streak started and that's when everything started going the right way so this was a return to the form from before the win streak that you don't want to see as good as it is to see the National Predators top line generating all three goals in this game it's too much it loses the balance it skewers the ice time the broadcast did a good job of breaking it down we did a good job of having the lengthy conversation about the time on ice and how well balanced rolling four lines has been as of late this wasn't a huge special teams game in any way to throw off the ice time yet there still was quite a bit we'll get more into that but for the national players when they're top end top heavy first line exclusive they're not going to win many games. It's not about the bad bounce that got them in this game. It was the fact that the balance that has been there for the previous eight games was not there at Bridgestone Arena. There were times, there were periods, there were shifts when there when it was there, but for the most part, the team was not quite the same in this particular game. So the first line, just completely dominant and no offense anywhere else on the score sheet, Luke Evangelista gets one assist. Luzon gets one assist. Every single point other than that and all three goals were had and taken up by the first line. You have to have better balance than that. It doesn't have to be all four lines every night, but you do have to have better balance and depth scoring than that. And the Montreal Canadiens came in and Jake Allen played a decent game. The Purs had their chance to put him away, but the Purs were unable to put their foot on Montreal, who is not a great team, but they're competing hard. And they walked out of Bridgestone Arena with two points. Preds honestly lucky to get out of the rink with a point in this one. Let's hear from our good friends at Stripe Digital Solutions, then more commentary analysis and so much more coming up during the box score portion of things. That's the good cold hard numbers. They don't lie, and we're going to bring them to you coming up next right here on the Renegades of Buck Podcast. The digital environment can be quite intimidating, time-consuming, and cumbersome, especially with all those other areas that need attention at your business, and that's why Stripe Digital Solutions is here to help. I know because that's exactly what Stripe Digital Solutions did for me and the Renegade Soft Puck. 
From designing my home website and helping me create my merchandise to special event posters, brand building, and social media management, but it's not just that. It's so much more. Stripe Digital Solutions has helped me every step of the way. From startup to full-time operation, Stripe Digital Solutions has been there to assist and advise every single step of the journey. In today's fast-paced world, the path to success is having a strong digital partner, and nobody is better in the trenches than Brandy and Stripe Digital Solutions. Get the solution before it's even a problem with Stripe Digital Solutions. Welcome back in. Time to talk about the numbers when it comes to the Nashville Predators on the power play. They were 0 for 2 in this game. On the PK, they were 2 for 2 in this game. So not a huge special teams affair. Oh, tell you who scored the goals. You already know who scored the goals. It was the first line. It was Forsberg, Nyquist, and O'Reilly. And they also had uh, all but two of the assists. The assists were 2 for O'Reilly, 1 for Nyquist, 1 for Forsberg, 1 for Evangelista, 1 for Jeremy Luzon. Shots on goal, also dominated by the first line. O'Reilly and Forsberg led the team, tied co-lead, whatever the hell you want to say it for each and then it was citizens had three Carrier had three uh, when it comes to block shots very few in the lineup no one he had three in this game nobody else with more than two uh, when it comes to hits Luzon had six which is always nice to see it was Smith with three Sherwood had two and uh, Shen also had two time on ice that's where things do get a little bit messed up from this game we've had so much balance as of late still no forwards over 20 minutes which is good news but Ryan O'Reilly led the way with 19 and total time on ice and then it was Nyquist at 1849 and Forsberg at 1826 the least amount of time by any forward was by Glass at 11.30. So Glass follows up having a hat trick uh, by uh, playing 11 minutes and 30 seconds, the least amount of time of any forward on the rink in this game. When it comes to the time on ice leaders for the defenders, of course, the captain, Roman Yossi, led the team in time on ice. 24.57 total, 22.14 for McDonough, 20.26 for Carrier. Uh, when it comes to the power play, which was 0 for 2, Forsberg led in total time on ice, 229, 232, 2 33 that's more than 229 so Nyquist and O'Reilly also lead the whole line led in power play time on ice he's what to say Yossi at 231 when it comes to shorthanded time on ice the PK good job in this one two for two especially in the last minute uh, 49 of the game plus the first couple seconds of regulation or uh, overtime there uh, didn't work out in the end but the PK unit did do their job 145 total shorthanded time on ice for Colton since 120 for Yakov Trenin 240 for McDonough 209 for Luzon when it comes to some other numbers falling out of the box score, face-off winning percentage, 53.8 for the Nashville Predators. 16 hits in this game, 18 block shots, 11 takeaways, 3 giveaways. Uh, the numbers a little bit low in this game, face-off winning percentage, good. The hits a little low, the block shots a little bit low. The takeaways, good high number, but they didn't take advantage of their opportunities when they had them. UC Soros in net, 26 out of 34 goals against an in-game save percentage of 8, 6, 7, 23 even strength saves, 3 power play saves. That's going to do it for the good cold hard numbers known as the box score. You can see they reveal much. All right, let's go ahead and close this episode out. Operation number 881. And you know what? It wasn't about the bad bounce. Listen, that goal against was terrible. It was an anomaly. It's going to happen once, twice, three times a season. Every team in the NHL goes through that. A tough bounce off the glass ends up in the back of your net. That was only a tying goal. What happened to the Nashville Purrs was actually revealing itself before the first goal for Montreal. The Predators had a chance as the second period was unfolding. They were just starting to dominate the Montreal Canadiens. Allen played a good game. You have to give him some stick taps for that in net for Montreal. But the Nashville Predators unable to finish off plays around the net, unable to put pucks in the net when they had the opportunities, unable to take advantage of partial breakaways, unable to take advantage of power play opportunities. They did not seize the game when they had the chance to take it away from the Montreal Canadiens. Then one defensive lapse, Montreal gets their first goal, one bad bounce off of the glass, it's into the back of the net. And then the Nashville Predators just really were themselves mentally physically or spiritually after that you heard Dan Hino even make reference to that on the broadcast itself so for the Predators it wasn't the bad bounce that did them in it certainly did not help to see UC Soros standing behind his goal as the puck is in the goal that doesn't help optically it doesn't help anybody at the rank so that was only a tie game at that point for the Predators that bad bounce was just indicative of the rest of the way that they were playing they couldn't stomp down on the Montreal Canadiens the way they had finished off every team on the eight game winning streak was to get ahead and then pull farther ahead and then get the empty net goal there in the third period the Preds 
unable to do it. If they got a bad bounce that goes in the net, they have a disallowed goal in the third period that would have given them the extra point. They still find a way to get a point in a game where, frankly, out of their last nine, ten games, maybe the worst that they've played uh, overall, and they still manage to get a point. So the winning streak comes to an end at eight. The tied for the second longest winning streak in team history. The point streak, though, continues at nine, and points are what it's all about now that we're down to 19 games to go in the season. Unbelievable. It's going to be so fascinating to continue tracking this as we go. Hope you stick with us in the trenches here with the Renegades of Puck, and we sure do appreciate each and every one of you checking out the show. That's going to do it for Operation number 881. I'm your host and captain, Crazy Charlie Sonier. Stick taps, love, and respect. <laughs>